Hi, I'm Chef Jen, and welcome to my home again. We are here for our sixth wine dinner in our series with Chef Gabe, Jen, and Beth. And today we are going through Portugal. And this one is called A Living History. I'm gonna let Jen and Beth talk more about the wine. But there are some amazing wines from Portugal that I think are really special. And I, most people just think of port wine and fortified wines in Portugal. And I think there is a lot of amazing wine out there. And of course, amazing food pairings. And so a few housekeeping things just to get going on. Um, if you haven't joined us before, we color coordinate all the dishes by dots. And so like the first course is pink dots for a foie gras dish. So assemble all your ingredients by the dots. We always would like it if you could temper the food, have it outside for at least an hour. Um, turn your oven on to 400. We put a pot of water on and I have a nice uh, you know, nice pan to saute some things in right here. Um, and before we get going, uh, I've been talking about a little bit of wine, we're gonna put the veal cheek in. And the veal cheek is with the red dot, and that veal cheek has sauce in it. And you have a pot of water, and we're just gonna pop this sous vide bag right in this pot of water, and that can stay for, you know, 20, 25, 30, it can stay for an hour um, in simmering water, but that way it'll be ready to go, and we won't have to mm -hmm. we won't have to wait for it. Um, so, to that, I'm gonna let Jen open up the wine, maybe talk a little bit about what we're gonna do, and then I'll jump back into some cooking. But or maybe organize your stuff and and get your wine out and get some glasses out. Be ready to have some fun. Sure, thanks. Well, yes. I'm so excited. I can't believe it's already been six. I guess time. I know. Time flies when you're having fun. So we just featured five different regions all across Spain, and when we got to go to Spain and Portugal together, we keep bragging I know. mercilessly about this wonderful <laughs> trip. We also went on a little tour of Portugal, so it was only natural to expand what we've already done and also include the other country on the Iberian Peninsula. Yeah. So, um, and I was just blown away with Portugal. Like, I yeah. can't wait to go back just diversity and so, so many beautiful wines and people and landscape and mm -hmm. buildings and architecture. I don't know, everything. I well, it's love with it. it yeah. Me too. I, I didn't know anything about it. And yeah. honestly, most of the Portuguese wines I had tasted, first of all, I didn't know any of the grape names. So it was a complete right. education yes. process and still is. Mm -hmm. um, but there were so many surprises and the culture of the people and the country is amazing. It's yeah. really, it's, it's just fallen on me. I love it. I'm so glad to hear that. I had the same experience, and every every time I get to go, someday I'll get to go back. Every yes. time I get to go, you better take us. I, okay. <laughs> I'm always surprised by how diverse it is. It's this skinny little sort of wedge on the side of the Iberian Peninsula. We'll have a map for everybody at home to kind of orient yourself a little bit. But you've got everything from really, really hot inland areas to super exposed, cold, rugged coastal plains to moderate climates in the, in the inland. Uh, the far north seems very much like northern Spain, Galicia, mm -hmm. except it's just on the yes. other side of a river. So that's yes. technically the Vino Verde region. Beautiful whites coming from there. And then everyone's heard of the Douro and Port, but Portugal goes <laughs> so, so far beyond that. Yes. So um, today we're talking about living history because winemaking in Portugal predates the Romans, predates even the Phoenicians. Yes, that's so, um, I know, it's so interesting. It's an ancient winemaking culture yeah. and they have just as much grape diversity for indigenous native grapes unique to Portugal as what you see in Spain. And Spain's got hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. So it really is astounding and it's very much part of everyday culture. You yeah. always have something to drink or a, yeah. m a little bit of something with any meal. So the living history part of things, we wanted to um, draw some attention to a few producers that are either using really traditional methods and grapes mm -hmm. and we also have a producer in our portfolio who we're all just stunned by who have this library of back vintages. So oh, yes. when oh, we found fantastic. them, they had a million bottles of old vintage wines from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, oh, 70s, 80s, treasure 90s. Treasure trove. Uh-huh, a million bottles that had just been sitting in the cellar in these sort of catacombs. You got to go there. Yes. And it's just row after row, piled overhead of bottles. Everything's covered in dust. There are white spiders and cobwebs hanging in sort of moss, mm -hmm. and there's a natural spring down there. Yeah. 
It's end of the world. world. That's where I want to be. Yeah. Tons of wine. And water. No one's going to know you're going to be there. There's the end of the world. Hydration is important. And once in a while, if you're lucky, they bring you a suckling pig. Yeah. Can we complain a minute right here? So look at my wine pour. Look at Beth's wine pour. I just want to let you guys know out there that um, Beth tends to me. cut me off a little Excuse early, me. even though we're just starting this <laughs> Okay, just wanted to mention that. Okay. We'll so I'm gonna Sorry I'm gonna about that. What I'm gonna do real quick is toast some bread. We'll have a shot yep. of wheat. There's a little oh, circle of uh, our sourdough bread that we make. I'm gonna toast this, but then all we have to do is put the foie gras together. So I'm gonna do this simultaneously while you keep chatting, okay? okay. Sounds good. <laughs> so I'll tell you about the producer. This is Cap Saint Joao. Um, a little bit of fun to say, especially if you've already had a glass or two. I always say about Portuguese. I'm not good at speaking Portuguese, but you have to sound as if you're slurring a little bit. And confidence when you say it, mm, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm, Cap Saint Joao. Yeah. So this is their Espumante Brut Rosé. It's sparkling wine. They are located in Bairava, which is right on the coast. We are talking about two feet above sea level here. Two feet. Yes. Or less. Slutty. A few places a little <laughs> bit more. Spring. Um, so cold North Atlantic, um, right up against this isn't far from Lisbon and isn't far from Oporto, so there's really nothing to break these big ocean ro um, rollers that come in mm -hmm. from New York, really, until you hit the coast of Lisbon. So very, very wide, exposed, cold ocean and perfect climate for sparkling wine. You want high acidity. We talked about that before when we did our Mediterranean and our cava dinner. Um, you want high acidity. You want lower sugars, more delicacy in the finished wine. And uh, that's exactly what you get here. So fascinatingly, this is a grape called Baga as the primary um, item in the blend. There's a nice little cheat sheet on the back for anybody who wants to learn more. I'm not gonna dwell too much on the grapes because in Portugal, everything is a blend and they're all indigenous and they're all delicious. So find a good producer, find an importer you trust, find a restaurant you trust mm -hmm. and enjoy Portuguese wines up and down the menu. Don't get hung up too much on the individual grapes because you'll have a hard time finding them because everything's a blend. Yeah. It's a beautifully blended culture, and the wines reflect that. And by the way, should we make a toast to 2021? Yes. Oh. 2021. Great cheers. year. Better year, everybody. Yes. Okay. Cheers. 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 Better cheers. year. 2021. Okay. Cheers. cheers. I love this. I love how um, the fruit comes out, but it's mm. also, I mean, there's a lot going on. It's creamy. You get the mm -hmm. yeasty. You get a little strawberry. You get there's good weight to it yeah. as well. And real quick, just on this little crostini, I have toasted it nicely and then you'll find a little hazelnut puree and we're going to smear schmear that's the word this hazelnut puree on the bread and then you're going to put that in your oven and that's just going to kind of melt into the bread and that's all we really need to do to the foie gras dish and anybody who hasn't met chester chester's here one of my dogs <laughs> okay and now um i will start to plate this a little bit while we wait for the bread but we're going to wait for a minute anyways, Jen. Okay. So please feel free to so keep talking about that. I'll tell you a little bit more about Cave Saint Joao. We, we went there together, we saw these great catacombs and I was not talking about aged sparkling wine. So they were founded in 1920, right around there. Um, and they originally were a port producer. Now I just told you they're in Bairrada. This is south from Oporto mm -hmm. and not in the Douro Valley. But before the Douro DO had become established and put geographical mandates on where you grow the grapes and where the, the finished product had to be aged, you could make port from any place. You just have to make the, the grape, put the wine in a certain way and fortify it. So Cap Saint Joao was a port producer and then in um, in the, re the, the years not long after they were established, I should say, uh, they were locked out of that business. There were a few pretty powerful players and they lobbied oh. and the DO was established and it stopped well, allowing. Not the small guy, huh? Well, and it it, it <laughs> became. Like what they were doing. It became very very focused specifically to the, the Douro, and to um, Oporto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they pivoted. They had beautiful fruit. They realized they this coastal influence, and they began making sparkling wines. Ah, so talk about amazing. one end of the spectrum to the other. They started out making port, and then they jumped into sparkling, and quickly added many more options to that. So now they make wine um, up and down the spectrum. Whites, reds, a little bit from Bairrada, also some coming out of a more inland zone called the Dow, which we do have a, another producer from the Dow this evening. And um, there are really beautiful 
house. But over the years, their market has changed a lot. So international trends, drinking trends, um, these are coastal, delicate, high acid wines. And the global consumer started looking for more, especially around about the 60s and 70s, looking for more big, ripe, Douro style wines, Napa style wines, big Bordeaux, chasing points. Mm -hmm. And although they own all of their properties and their vineyards and their buildings, they, um, they uh, didn't have a consumer anymore for a lot of what they produced. And so they put, the, put it down in the cellar, sold some locally to keep wow. the lights on and because it's their business, but they were producing much more all of a sudden than what they were selling. So they kind of kept producing it, but we ended up with some beautiful discoveries kind of by accident because some of these wines weren't made to age, they just happened to age perfectly. Oh, interesting. That's so we'll crazy. get into those a little yeah. bit later on. So our first course um, to pair with this, and you know, everything goes with bubbles if you ask me. So, <laughs> so it's do. not hard to pair something with bubbles. but. Chef Gabe, who's our chef at Rioja, he makes a pretty beautiful foie gras torchon. Um, and um, this is one of our foie gras torchons that you guys are gonna start with. So it has a light little cure and brandy on it, a little poach. It takes us about a week to make these and we hang them in the walk-in. They're just a beautiful preparation of foie gras. Wow. And the setup is pretty simple. Um, I really, with this wine, the fruit, I felt like I tasted like fresh cranberry a little bit. Mm. Yeah. I tasted this wine, so Absolutely. that's why I wanted to do a little cranberry with it. So we have some pickled cranberries, a little cranberry sauce, some hazelnut, because I also like the creaminess of the hazelnut was going to add to this, mm -hmm. um, a little watercress, and our hazelnut toast. So super simple on this guy. We have our little kind of hazelnut toast here. We'll set, oh, I'll actually put it here first. So what I like to do, I like to just mound these with the wine. Doesn't that smell good? Awesome. Yeah, so it that kind of smells yeah. buttery and yummy and, and fattiness with it. And so I like so to perfect. mound the top of this little toast with the cranberries. Just kind of pile them on there. I think it looks really pretty. And I think one of the fun things about doing these dinners at home is kind of plating fancy food at home. So that's <laughs> and then we have a little squirt bottle. We're gonna give you guys some of this cranberry puree sauce. You're gonna put some kind of dots on here because we're making the plate look like dots, so we thought we'd mimic that. Then we thought we'd put a hazelnut right in the center of a few of these. You know, what trying to be fancy, so, yeah, trying my, to be fancy. My home cooking never looks like this. My well, doesn't look like this at you, all. You guys <laughs> need to, this, we help you look good. This yeah. is what yeah. our I job is. This step up my game on the plating, I think. It's so much fun, but especially with the guidance. Yeah. I can follow instructions. I don't just, I just don't come up with it on my own. And my, my food is a little bit more casual. Well, at home. So well, what a treat. That's why this is such a treat. Well, and yeah. now the watercress is beautiful, but also the pepperiness. So this is a rich dish. Mm -hmm. And so the pepperiness, I think, really adds. So I think this is a, is a beautiful plate. It's gorgeous. Mm. And that is as simple as it is to, to just present that at home. So I'll let you guys taste this, and I'll get the mise en place ready for the next dish. We can see what you guys think about how the pairing went and how everything went back. And I might even give some know, snacks right? to the animals on the other side of the camera. What do you <laughs> think? Once Should again, we? I was talking about bubbles and like outside of champagne mm -hmm. because they're just so affordable and approachable and you can drink them every day. And I love that. You really can. And this is one I remember, Beth, after we came back from Cabo San Joao from our trip. You are the first person in Colorado who asked me for a bottle of this oh, rosé. Yay! They actually asked me for a case. Do you well, think they <laughs> Yeah, hmm. a case. Probably for my home use, right? Well, I think I said you have to get a case because it's not in Colorado yet, and you said I'm taking that home. Yep, exactly. So we did, and now you know here we are years later, and we do pretty well with this wine. It's not in every store, but I know you can get it at Rioja. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. I look how pretty this is. And you know it's. You know, foie gras is fancy, but I think, what do you think? Mm. Make it taste well, I think it's going to be pretty amazing. I think that in this case, the, the sparkling wine will really refresh you after you take a bite of it. It'll really cleanse your palate. Wash, yeah, and, it'll yeah. really kind of do that. Mm -hmm. That trick with it, where, mm -hmm. you know. Um, now, while these two ladies are tasting, mm -hmm. we'll get the green dot stuff ready, and there's nothing to do here. But what do you think, Jen, mm -hmm. Beth? Well, how... Take some champagne, not champagne, I'm sorry, I keep saying that, sparkling wine. <laughs> mm. We take it as a compliment. Yes. <laughs> 
Um, the cranberry is what do you, so pretty with this. Oh, good. Because sometimes pickle, you know, at, at home, it can be like a really fight wine because, you know, the vinegar and wine really fight. This so. brings it together. The fattiness of the hazelnut uh -huh. and then the foie. I, the cranberries on their own would probably be a little, a little sharp. Mm -hmm. But Too the much? whole bite together is amazing. Yeah, because you need the fattiness of it and it just really, it plays really well. Jenny? All together, it almost just seems like a, I, I almost didn't even feel that the cranberry was pickled. Mm -hmm. I just felt like these delicious, really kind of fresh yeah. craisins. I know they're fancier than mm -hmm. craisins. Oh, but with tasty. the foie mm -hmm. and the watercress and the, that, mm -hmm. the texture on the toast is really, yeah, the really so delicate too. Is and great. then the hazelnut on top. Um, okay, awesome. And this just, it brings out really bright, so good. bright red fruits in the wine. And then of course that acidity is perfect for cleansing your palate or something as rich yeah. and luxurious as foie. Mm -hmm. And this is such a treat. Uh -huh. I don't get foie every day. I shouldn't. No. Okay. Least. Yeah. <laughs> so sitting we back and should. looking, yeah. looking at this, it almost reminded me of some kind of a, a incredibly decadent PB and J. Totally. Yeah. The cranberry. <laughs> and oh yeah. You, butter. Really you are right. Yeah. You are right. <laughs> incredibly. And I think you're right, Jen. Yeah. I also have young kids, so I'm always yes. you know <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. But this is much nicer than the peanut butter and jelly that they get. Love that. Mm. Okay. Well, while we're snacking, I'm gonna let you guys know about the next course. I'm really excited about this course with how white and fluffy this is, and it's gonna look super fancy at home. This is our potato and whipped goat cheese Napoleon. So we've given you a pastry bag, which is gonna be fun. And you'll need to take scissors or something and cut the end off here. That way you can squeeze and pipe the whipped goat cheese out. Not where the scissor line is, that's too big. Um, maybe just so the hole is about the size of a dime. I think that should be fine. Mm -hmm. And then we have a few things. We have some grapes that we put like a little grape reduction on to kind of macerate. And then we have these potato crisps um, which are going to be the layers of the Napoleon. Wow. This is going to be fun. Oh. I'm really excited. You guys are going to love this. Full yeah. potato size. Look how yeah. beautiful those mm. are. Yeah, and Gabe, I'm going to have you make up another one for our production assistants in the background <laughs> over there. So, Gabe, okay. yeah, I'll have you grab any plate you want. Gabe, a small plate. And, um, and then we have a sherbel salad. Now, it's, it's sherbel, a little dill, and a little radicchio. And this um, fresh herbs. What I'd like you guys to do first, so, First, we're gonna pipe a little of this. We're just gonna squeeze from the top. We're gonna pipe a few, like two small dots, put it on the plate, so that way when we put our first potato chip, it doesn't slide around. And so that's like the glue to hold your little Napoleon in place, if that makes sense. Perfect. And then we're gonna pipe a little bit of this uh, whipped goat cheese on here. This looks fun. It looks so airy too. It is, yeah. We wow. whipped it and it's delicious. Now mm. then we're going to just layer it with our fresh grapes that have a little bit of that kind of grape reduction on here. There we go. And then again, we're going to repeat that layer. We're going to repeat this. Just going to kind of do, 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 squirt that on here. There, wow. okay. Oh. And then more grapes again. So this, um, I love this dish so much. Uh, Matthew, we've been talking about putting this on the menu at Rioja. I love how, you know, Jen, we make these menu items for this <laughs> dinner and they all are so amazing that Chef Gabe and I are like, well, we have to put on the menu at Rioja. I was gonna say, I think I've heard you say that before. Yeah. But what a treat to be able to come back and you fall in love with it yes. at, at your yeah. dinner and then you can come back and find it again. Exactly. And we're gonna give you guys an extra chip in case you did just what I did, break one. <laughs> but if you did break a couple, you could put that back together in the layer and that cheese will stick it on there, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I put a little extra virgin olive oil we gave you, a little Malden salt. We're gonna to toss that very lightly. And then I do think a lot of herbs is kind of important here, you guys. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna really stack good. that up with a <laughs> lot of herbs. And then I'm gonna put a few more grapes on top, just so people see that there's grapes in it. This is too pretty to eat. I know, but I wait know, till you eat it. Crash because down. it, it <laughs> but, but it's so light and fluffy that, now look how cool. So look at that awesome curly wow. Napoleon. I love that. Is that a good shot? Okay, and so I'm really excited. Now, before 
Oh, Jen's fucking wine. Okay, because she's already. I have to sweat. Yeah, smart woman. Smart I'm ready. Can we question your I'm ready with it. Yes, I will. I will get rid of that. Even lest though that's I, a sin. But lest I be accused of short pouring. Exactly. I know, right? <laughs> that's my. Probably should be pouring her much. I know. <laughs> that's for after. It was the bubbles. Okay. So, tell us about this wine. Yes, absolutely. So, this is from a new winery. This is a producer um, named Alvaro Castro, and his daughter Maria is also involved in the winemaking now. I always love to give shout outs to the female winemakers in the world. So, we're in the Dow, we're in the, um, the central northern part of Portugal, and this is a moderate climate area. So, if you imagine being sort of in the middle of a, a group of mountains. It's just south of the Douro, which is very, very hot inland very Portugal. Hot. It's just inland from Extremadura in Spain. It's just inland from, I'm sorry, it's just coastal from Extremadura in Spain, just inland from Bairada. And um, it's quite hot to the south as well in Alentejo, but there are mountains that rise up and separate the Dow from each of those extreme the nose Climates. is so awesome. And protect it. In a and sense. they protect yeah. it. So it's it's this it's this cool climate little sort of pocket. Mm -hmm. Alvaro, oh. the winemaker, loves to say that if God designed a wine region, it would look a lot like the Dow. <sighs> so our soils are sandy and rose quartz, sort of mm. like this, but with colors from the plate in it. It's oh it's gosh. just stunning. He curses them with his tractor, of course, but the minerals in the soil really come through in the grape. And the reason that this wine lined up with our theme for tonight is that Encruzado is an ancient grape, indigenous and unique to Portugal. That's right. Love that. Um, so Encruzado is called Encruzado because of the way the vine grows. It sort of intertwines. Imagine a braid. Yeah. So it's intercrossed. Encruzado mm. is the name. And so it's as oh, if cool. the wine braids itself as it grows. So um, the, the, the grape is fascinating, it's beautiful. You can really pick up on this texture. Yeah, it's really full, it's, it's, it's round. It's delicious. It's balanced though. Yeah, it's got some nice acidity on yeah. the end, but not too much. You can feel yeah. the sunshine. You can. You, you really can. can. You can feel the you sunshine. You can feel the sunshine on it. All right, ladies, so, so mm. when you do this, oh, you just gotta do You're it. Gonna just no, you just gotta, no, no, you just gotta do it because it's so fun and it's so light. I know, seriously, okay. you gotta just do it with my because fork. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> no, he's got to do it. Yes. <laughs> that is really satisfying. I know, I it is, it is, it is. But when you get a bite, make sure you try some of those herbs, because I okay. do think that's really important, is those herbs. I love And the then, herbs. again, so what I love about this dish is when you're done eating it, it, it you're not full. You're like, oh, that's big. But it's light and fluffy and so airy. So dangerous. Yes, it is dangerous. It so is totally dangerous. It's totally dangerous. A glass light, of light, fluffy, airy, and then the crunchy potato. Mm. Oh my and goodness. then I think with this particular... Oh my God, this is uh, Chester is not getting any. Sorry, Chester. It's like a textural roller <laughs> wow. coaster. Mm -hmm. The flavors are the same. That salty mm -hmm. potato crisp, and then the grape sort of washes it through, mm -hmm. and the herbs are so bright and sharp and clean. Mm -hmm. And then the creamy mm -hmm. sort of wow. goat cheese clouds. Yes, goat cheese clouds. Wow. Goat cheese is so light. Mm. Mm. I just thought it was fun, and it's really fancy looking. And I think, um, besides, it tastes delicious. So. <laughs> you know, it's hopefully fantastic. people can enjoy making fancy oh food. The wine's really, really that. great. The wine seems more powerful when I pair it with this dish. Yeah. Because the dish has such delicacy to it that all of a sudden I take another sip and this wine really has a firm footing. Um, yeah. It works beautifully. This, the citrus notes, the higher acid in the wine, again, I always talk about acidity helping to contrast and cleanse the palate from this rich sort of fatty flavors of the cheeses and the fried potato. Yes. Wow, nothing better. Fried the herbs are the fried herbs potatoes. really. People who really say do. they don't like mm -hmm. fried potatoes are people who just don't want to eat them. Mm -hmm. We just can't. Which talk I to also them. blame you. <laughs> <laughs> so a little okay. more about the mm -hmm. uh, the wine from Alvaro Castro, ancient varietal, and he uses very mm -hmm. very time honored traditional winemaking. Um, in the vineyard, he's all sustainable certified. He also does a little biodynamic sort of on the side. We won't, won't talk about it much. Um, but very traditional in the vineyard and also in the winery. This is an open top ferment, it's native yeasts. Yeah. It's just all right. about showing off the fruit, the quality of the fruit and what the raw materials started out as. It's the way it's supposed to be. The wine yeah. tells him Simple. what yeah. it wants to be, yeah. Which I love, so. I mean, yeah, sometimes even with food, Sometimes we over manipulate mm -hmm. where we lose the beauty of goat yeah. cheese or shervil or anything that we do. Mm -hmm. So I think 
the winemaking and you know so many similar things. Well, while while this is going, I'm just going to let you know for the next course you have some uh, marble potatoes, and I have a little tray, and I'm just going to put the marble potatoes in our oven to start to get hot, and then I'm also going to take our uh, spring garlic sous vis, and either you can put it in your microwave for you know 20, 30 seconds, or you can put it in a little pot and warm it. So either way, I just thought I'd mention. Um, I think Gabe will put this in the microwave if you want for like what, 20 seconds, Gabe. And I'll put these potatoes in. And that way, Jen, you can continue on. And I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, uh, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm happy to be over here just nibbling away on this delicious okay. feast. <laughs> yes. Oh, and by the way, um, our next wine dinner is going to be kind of it's not the opposite. Still Portugal, but this is a living history with some of the more who make wines more traditional method, and mm -hmm. then what do we call it? A new, what do we call a new it world style? New, new frontiers. New frontiers. So maybe winemakers that are choosing to push the boundaries of winemaking that was more classical to Portugal. Mm -hmm. Or trying new things or trying in new areas things. that have always been very traditional. So we, well, we haven't really selected the wines yet, but I have a hunch that, uh, well, everything I'm showing you new comes from style. producers that fit this description. So it might be a very old region in the middle of the ocean. It might be a very old region in the middle of the country. I'm not sure yet. I love that. But we have so many to choose from because with Portugal, with a country that has such a rich and deep history of winemaking, but also a ton of new, in energetic, enthusiastic producers oh, and yeah. older producers who see the value of trying new things. It doesn't have to be fixed just because it's always been done that way. Exactly. Uh, we have a lot of really yes. dynamic things coming out of Portugal and they are world class. So I'm excited with the next dinner to show you some of those. We, all get, we all get caught in that trap of, oh, we've been doing it this way for so long. You know, like sometimes we have to ask ourselves, we don't have to do it this way. Why well, don't we do it a new way? It's, it's <laughs> exactly. I mean, the same thing with drinking wine. I've been drinking Italian wine, so I, you know. That's where I started. It's like you have to venture out. It's the same thing with the producers. Mm -hmm. And definitely, I mean, Portugal is where Spain was a number of years ago. It's just really being discovered. And there are some gems out there. Just the finds are so oh. amazing. I love that. So I could say, for example, this wine, sorry, plate. Oh. This <laughs> wine, Encruzado, has nothing to do with the name of a wine that you would have, um, the name of a grape you would have heard of from traditional old world regions, right? European wine regions. But I have heard many people say, you know, this almost reminds me of a Chablis. I was yes, just going to say, this it has is very much that Chablis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For because me you have the flint and the mineral mm -hmm. and the citrus. It doesn't have the tropical. Without, right. that tropical. Have tropical. Without that tropical. Yeah. Without that, yeah. It has but everything else, though. Yeah. This is 2015 vintage. Oh, we haven't talked yeah. about the fact that this is a five year old yeah. white. Yeah. And it is star bright, yeah. brilliant, yeah. and fresh, and nice. uplifted. There is no rush. Star bright, fresh. It sounds like you're talking about me. Well, I am. I don't know. I'm just feeling so. <laughs> no, you're sunshine. You're okay, sunshine. Okay, I'm sunshine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we are going into red, mm. which I'd say port is more known for, and octopus. And this dish mm. that we've created here, um, where as I've been creating dishes that go with the wine, this dish is Portugal. It's beans, mm. it's octopus, mm -hmm. it's olives, it's it's mm. briny, it's, mm. it's all those things that you think about, at least I do. And some orange. And, so, that's and some orange, exactly. Mm -hmm. So exactly. I have, we have already cooked this octopus for you. We've pressure cooked it with um, some beautiful red wine. Not that exactly. <laughs> that's a, a nice, nice tempranillo. A nice, nice tempranillo. <laughs> Not that <laughs> wine, okay? We didn't use it. Be, be so, smart about what you, what, what don't you cook. Don't cook with this. Yeah, you don't yeah, need don't to cook with this. this. If you forget about but, this and don't drink it for two weeks, then yeah. cook with it. Yeah. But open. If you, but, but, I don't think you're going to forget what it. What we're no, going to do so. is we are going to uh, put this octopus in a, in a hot pan with a little oil and give it a nice sear. So it's been cooked, but I want to give it a nice little sear. If you wanted to cook this on your grill, you could put a little oil on your grill and grill it. We, we do that at Rioja. So I do like that charred mm -hmm. little grill. I don't want to catch fire and flame, but I want a little char on it. So on so a grill, you would cook it on a hot on a hot grill? Medium hot, yeah. Medium like hot. Not all the way, but medium hot. And just long enough to get the grill marks? You still yeah, warm it, though. Yeah, warm it right. through. So um, in this instance, you know, I might cook it on the other side and, and Chef Gabe might pop it in the oven for a second. Um, as soon as we turn this over, though, we're going to put our veg mix in that same pan. Um, so we have some braised chard in here. Now let me just show the camera. We have chard, we have uh, green olives, we have fast chilies, and we have gigante beans. Mm -hmm. um, so 
and then we have those marble potatoes, like I said. We have a beautiful, this red wine vinaigrette. Once we pressure cook the octopus in the red wine, we take the juices, and then we reduce more uh, wine with the octopus juices and make a vinaigrette from it. It's lovely. It has a beautiful flavor uh, of the ocean and octopus and red wine. Good amount of acid. Infused, a little bit of Dijon mustard. But infused by the sea. Yeah, and then we have a little orange zest that we've poached. Uh, again, we use our pressure cooker for this. We poach it, I get a little light simple syrup. So a little sugar, but more water. Like a typical simple syrup would be 50 50. Less sugar because we don't want it sweet. Mm. But it needs a little sweetness. I love the pressure yeah, so, cooker coming back. Well, and you know? you know, the pressure cooker is a beautiful thing, not just for speed, but it really, Amazing. like, to be honest, to cook beans, yeah. you know, yeah. you, after you soak beans, 15 minutes you cook beans, right. not like three hours on the stove from yeah. dry. Oh, well, yeah. Wow. And amazing. things like this beautiful orange confit where, you know, Gabe and I used to take three hours and really slow, I have to add more water, maybe it'd caramelize. Now it cooks perfect and darn fresh. amazing. So, um, the last ingredient, which is really cool, is a green garlic soubise. Now, a soubise is usually like an onion sauce of some sort. Mm -hmm. This is made with spring garlic, which is just coming this season, mm -hmm. or green garlic, people call it. And what we've done is we've cut up this spring garlic, we've put it in a cryovac bag with a little bit of cream, a little bit of butter, a little salt, and that's it, right? Vegetable. And a little vegetable stock, yeah. And then we, then we cooked it either in a combi oven or you put it in a pot of boiling water. So it's, you know, a bag, all the veggies, we're gonna cook in this, you know, simmering water for about 40 minutes, and then we blend it into this beautiful sauce. And Looks I think gorgeous. you guys are gonna love that. Yeah. Okay. So perfect. So Jeff, Jeff and I'm gonna pop that. Oh, here I'll put the veg in here, Gabe. I like Sorry, the fact that you're saying that uh, spring garlic is in season or green garlic. Does that mean yes. spring is coming? Yes. Right? Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> we know I'm getting your excited. It's February. It's mid February, but. Um, it's coming. It is coming. starting to come up. Here in Colorado, yeah. but in California, spring oh, yeah. vegetables are happening. Thank goodness. And in, you know, Mexico. It, yeah. It's already spring veggie time. That's um, awesome. Yeah, so we can get these <laughs> things now. So that is cool. So as that's in, Jen, let's talk about a little bit about the red wine, and then I'll interrupt you after a minute, but we'll you know, talk for a no, second. I know, I guess, I but no, I know. I can't drink it all. I'm driving after this. So here, we'll have this. So again, we're going back to Cap Saint Joao. So this is one of the brands that they developed after they stopped making port and started making sparkling and then realized, wow, we have these vineyard holdings. Let's do something really interesting with them. So this is not a typo. You don't need to rub your eyes. This is 1996 mm -hmm. vintage Ooh. Tinto, yeah. which is a blend which has been perfectly aged in the cellar of the winery in these catacombs yeah. with the spiders and the cobwebs mm -hmm. since 1997. So this is one of the wines I was speaking about before that is sort of a happy accident. It was not made with the intention of aging. It's um, a blend. Everything's a blend. But this is mostly Baga, which B-A-G-A, -A, happens to act quite a lot like uh, Nebbiolo. Oh, okay. Ooh, which fine. is a very age-worthy wine from mm -hmm. Italy. Yeah. High acid, big tannins, lots of mm -hmm. structure. And there are a couple of other local grapes blended in, of course, because everything in Portugal is a blend. Um, but this wine is made in cement. There's no oak whatsoever. And it's left to rest in the cement tanks for about two years. So I take it back. It was bottled in 1998, but harvested in 1996. And then two years in cement, went into the bottle, went into the cellar and waited for a customer. And whoo, we were happy to be the customer. That's incredible um, because I mean, most. Most bottles age in oak, of course. So yes. they've just been waiting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So so, so fascinating. fascinating. You remember when we tasted this? Yeah. I mean, so at home, Look at the color uh, too. when Matthew, Beth, and I taste wine, um, you guys are getting all the best stuff. Because yes. We, we don't unfortunately mess around. really like good wine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Life's, too. Life's too short to drink bad wine. So I agree. <laughs> that was, was so Nebbiolo too. So it does have a oh, lot of that sort of like best. leather, tobacco, tea leaf. Love you know, those kind of like deep, earthy, yeah, exactly. aged notes. I am. Um, and, and at 96? I mean, that's unheard of. You couldn't. Yeah. So there's some speculation that because it aged in cement, it didn't have quite the same micro oxidization that happens in oak. That's part of why it stood up longer. Yeah. But we it also does have, have white color oxidizing on the yeah. skin. And obviously, it's 25 years old. It's so. got that yeah. rusty color for oxid oxidization. It's like. It's like me, 25 years old, like me. 
That's right, sunshine. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> okay, maybe Just not. Keep coming <laughs> out, sunshine. But I will say, a lot of times me with an too. old, with an aged wine, mm. you don't really need to decant um, because the wine has already had enough time to shake up its wrinkles and it will mm. open quite quickly oh, in the oh wow in the glass. Sorry. I'm, my mouth just keeps oh my flooding. Gosh, this is like, I know. This wine you can decant. I think it's got plenty of power still. I would decant it and drink it pretty quickly. Um, it can accelerate the, the process of the wine sort of peaking and then declining after, especially an aged wine. But so, decant it and drink it right away and it'll speed up that sort of blossoming of the extra aromas. So we opened this at the beginning of the dinner. Yes. Right before we started. Mm -hmm. and Staying the bottle just fine. This is incredible, by the way. And you know, I do worry about sometimes when you open up those older bottles and they're like gone like that. But I, this, is, this is holding up like amazingly well. And so you just have to drink it a lot faster. But there oh. you go. Well, I would say I the important thing is to just drink it constantly. There you go. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna there jump go. in again. <laughs> so um, for this plate, I like to put the spring garlic soubise down first on one side of the plate, kind of make a little little border and you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. Um, the veggies, maybe a tiny pinch of salt, but they don't need much seasoning. We've seasoned them mostly already. And I'm going to take a nice tight pile of that veggies and put it right there, nice and tight. Uh, I have some olives. And then, can't read that nice for me. And then we are going to put the octopus on. Whoop, come here. <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Is it walking away? It was trying to squirt away. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. Yeah, wow. we're going to put the octopus on. Then we're going to take this beautiful vinaigrette I was telling you about, and we're going to put it on this side, kind of bordering that green. Oh, look how pretty that is. And then we'll finish with the orange. And I think you guys are going to love this. Um, Gabe and I have been talking about putting this on the menu. <laughs> Once again, uh, Gabe and I. So those oh, the potatoes. You, that's right. Sorry. Thank you, Gabe. Those of you that have uh, part partaken in our wine dinners, sometimes the menu items make it to the menu <laughs> yes. uh, because they're just so good. So keep an eye out for that stuff. When you fall in love with this octopus, I'm sure it will, will make it a star appearance. Yeah, I feel like... Uh, in Portugal, they use uh, potatoes, beans, greens, mm -hmm. like all yes. these things, and they use them together. You're like, oh, you have starch and starch, but it just works somehow. They're different. So yeah, and they are absolutely mm -hmm. different starches, and yeah. they and they work. So, I'm really excited oh, wow. to try this with the wine, That's just exciting. you guys. And, you have to and I'm not sure if I gave a good shot there. Is Matthew, is that a good shot? It's exciting. all right. So, all right. After this, is, set. whenever I see it on the menu, I'm like, oh, I just keep eating. I've done a bite of it. Mm-hmm. Where do you get your octopus, I have to ask? Well, it's all Spanish octopus, and we have a couple of different purveyors um, that we get it from. And we make sure it's caught. So there's different ways sustainably to catch octopus. The one's called a pot trap. Mm -hmm. And you have to have it, I think, to be sustainable, pot trap Spanish yeah. octopus. So we get that specific kind. So different people, mm -hmm. but um, we make sure we get it all sustainable. Because that's a really important part of our mission statement at Rio Lodge, that we have only sustainable fish. I think that's so great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We try to be good stewards of our environment. You have to be. You have to be. That's what I'm well, saying. I'm going into the meaty side. Yeah, do it, do it. <laughs> and get, yeah, get all that business. Ooh. Yeah, all that business. So the gigante <laughs> beans. Yes. Oh, are these, so beans are such a big part of, what, you know, especially in stews and with a lot of awful, with a lot of yeah. sort of, you know, even liver and things like that in Portugal. It's very common on the menu. Mm -hmm. um, but gigante beans, are they, I think I often see f like fava beans. Yes in Spain and Portuguese cuisine, mm -hmm. and I have a hard time finding them here. This bite is going to be impossible. Oh, no. Okay. You Nobody loves it. Yeah, you should be Those right. gigante beans are my favorite beans. But aren't beans they awesome? Ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the They're marinade. literally my favorite. And then the orange. Beans, yeah. If you didn't get the orange, let's get a little orange, because that the orange is the wine, mm -hmm. I think. It's going to so be important. Are they similar a little bit to lima beans, the gigantes? Mm -hmm. No. Different. They're more of a... Mm-hmm. Hold on. <laughs> right. They're like a... Mm. Mm. Try the orange with it. If you did get by the orange, I think the orange with the wine really no? makes it. Okay. I do. I think um, if you insist. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the name. I know that we sometimes get Rancho Gordo, which I think does a great job of beans. Mm -hmm. But that's a species, so I'm not sure if there's. Oh. Obviously, it's not. It's not a. It's not a fava. At all, but. Um, 
have, yeah, I mean, it obviously just much bigger, so. It's gigante. It's giant. They are gigante. It's a like <laughs> I can't find favas. I find oh, limas, but limas are tiny. Well, you we get favas in this. We get the favas. Okay. Okay. And by the way, Colorado grows a lot of favas. So Colorado really? grows a lot of favas. Yeah, we do a good job oh. here with favas. Well, apparently, I'm going to the wrong places okay. to shop. Now, Chester thinks that it's not really good. In case <laughs> he is on the so camera, you see Chester at home. breakfast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's been napping all day. Oh, that orange is. Okay, <laughs> that orange is really awesome. Yeah, what do you guys think with the orange with the wine? Yeah. Okay. I'm about to have another. Okay. Very large bite. Okay. This is now, delicious, and I'm not sorry. And you're not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now for the next dish that we're gonna get ready, as now, but try it though with wine pairing. I think you're gonna be it's super happy. It's amazing. This may be the best wine pairing yet. <laughs> okay, so for mm. our next dish, we have the veal cheek and risotto. You already have the veal cheek going, and this is mm. gonna be a super simple. We have more sauce over too, Matthew. It'll be a really easy plate up. We have this beautiful. Oveja cheese? Am I pronouncing that right? Oveja. Mm -hmm. Oveja, which is sheep's milk cheese from mm -hmm. Portugal. Mm -hmm. And it's... Uh, it might be ovella. I'm, I'm not... I don't... I'm sorry, I Portuguese people. I'm yeah, I, I don't have great Portuguese pronunciation, mm -hmm. so I just want to apologize right now for that. Mm -hmm. But anyways, it's beautiful sheep's milk cheese. Soft, a little stinky. It's going to be awesome into this risotto. So Best I'm, kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I would love for you guys to do first is put on the risotto first. And Chef Gabe is going to, um, here, I'm going to Chef Gabe is my gorgeous assistant. <laughs> and so we have par cooked the rice for you guys. And, and we have some chicken stock. Now, we gave you more chicken stock than you need. But I would like you to put the chicken stock in your pan and bring that up to a boil. And I'd like you to put maybe the rest of the stock on to get hot. I always like to cook risotto with boiling stock. I think it cooks much better. And it cooks more evenly. The rice grains cook much more evenly. So um, we will then put the risotto in with this stock. It's come up to a simmer. And now Gabe is going to literally, like with a wooden spoon, like whip the hell out of it. You know, well, we want that starch. We par cooked it, so there is starch already activated, but that's super important. So it's already so, a little bit cooked. It's already actually about three quarters cooked. Oh. I need to use that trick at home. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is a good. And... Yeah, we we take our time to really make the base rice mm -hmm. and really create the starch, and then we cool it down, and then we find it can be like an eight minute pickup at the restaurant. Oh. So we we have like I think a really good method. Yeah. You'd never be able to do it yes. from scratch. In it's a restaurant restaurant tricks. Yes, well, yes. and a lot of good quality restaurant okay. tricks. But let's stop yeah, there because yes, yes. there are some restaurants. Disclaimer. That, yes. Mm -hmm. That add cream and things like that yes. to, their, to their rice. And, and then the risotto cream. should make its own cream, right? It's the yes. starch it's breaking it's down. The starch should be creamy, exactly, yeah. yeah. So we don't ever add cream to risotto. And you're right, a lot of restaurants kind of cheat, they cheat and they don't cook it right. So I'm, I'm a Nazi, and, and not in a, that way, I'm with, with, with risotto. Yes, yes, not purist. Not Let's say purist. I'm a uh, crazy, <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for being more accurate, yes. I am um, crazy, yeah. And if you guys want to see. should look. Yeah, yeah. Do you see how shiny that mm -hmm. starchy that liquid is? Cloudy so. and starchy, just from beating all the, mm -hmm. the yeah, rice kind of kernels sweet. together. And so, what I want you to do at home is, I want you to. It, I know it's not quite good right now, but I want you to taste a rice kernel, and then if it's just fully cooked, as in there's not a little, there's a little kernel of crunch, I want you to go just, just a minute longer because the rice shouldn't lose all of its um, texture. Mm -hmm. You don't want it crunchy. But you, you don't want it mushy either. So this al dente-ness of rice is, is a hybrid. So mm -hmm. we have butter chopped up and we have this beautiful cheese. Now, I have an excessive amount of cheese because I wanted an excessive amount of cheese <laughs> because I like cheese. And <laughs> so, and so um, when we do add this, uh, we're gonna paddle this real, so once this fat, so the cheese and the butter are the fat. Mm. Once Gabe puts the fat in the pan, he's really gonna paddle that. He's really going to make sure that the fat emulsifies into the starchiness of the rice. And that's super important. And then the rest of this dish is going to be like easy. So is it ready for the cheese? Yep. Okay, so we're going to put all that cheese in here. And then I gave an ounce of butter. I'm going to start with half of it because it might be a little excessive. And then mm -hmm. I'll have Chef Gabe taste it. Even though know, that is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to pair so well with this next one. And then what I'd like to do for presentation, so we have some nice mustard greens, some young mustard green frills, 
And I'll put the risotto in first, but normally I would toss our greens in oil, but because this risotto is so rich, we're just gonna put the mustard greens and the poached prune around, and it's gonna really add, you're gonna need that cleansing factor so it's not so rich. The veal cheek uh, has been cooked with beautiful wine and prunes, and the sauce is blended up. Uh, and that veal cheek is ready now, and you see that, beautiful. I have two cheeks here. Maybe the boys will get one. We'll see. <laughs> Do you okay. mind if we dump your glass? Okay. Oh, please. And then, so you see, Gabe is really whipping that risotto. And look how, if you guys can see that shot, it just looks creamy and beautiful. Like it's, it's really it, shiny. Yeah, yeah it still, is shiny from that starch. Mm, yeah. There's still some shell and cheese. So I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah, and then we're going to taste it for a little salt and pepper. You're going to want to season that. But. Mm. That cheese tastes so good now. <laughs> so a little salt. I would say just a teensy bit of pepper. And I like black pepper versus white, but you can use whatever you like. Okay. My towel's in the way. That pepper muzzle's you know, cranky. Mm. Oh, you guys this have a good this. pour. Oh my gosh. Oh, Beth Anything? gave a proper pour. Now, well, I'm not messing around with this wine. I'm sorry. Now look how, <laughs> now look at the color sorry. on this wine though. This wine is already like a red leather yeah. color. Like, isn't that interesting? And the nose so what it. Jen's looking at is the mm. there's this little spot called the rim, which is just at the edge of the liquid in your glass, and you can see the center of the rim. Well, the center of the liquid has the deepest, darkest, thickest color, and with aged wines especially, but with young wines, it's a fun it's a fun game to play too. You track with your eye the change in color as you reach the edge of the liquid. This one, the color goes quite far it's, out. Yeah, it does not, you don't lose it at all. Mm. In a very, very young wine, it'll be sort of like a drawn line. The color goes all the way out. And as wine begins to age, the color molecules sort of pull in a bit and you end up with more of a clear rim. Um, sometimes it can be, this one I would say is sort of prune colored. Very prune. Um, exactly. Yeah. It's deeper than brick. So it's in the dish. <laughs> Just like the dish. Um, <laughs> And I think that the past one had a little more of that reddish brick note, and this one's much more mm -hmm. of that dark sort of purple brown. This is yeah. dark. But again, not a typo. You don't need to check your eyes. This is 1985. I know. <laughs> so for those of you that ordered all the wines, the year I graduated from the year. The year you were born. Oh god, no! <laughs> don't. Oh, easy. Hold on. Wait a minute. I graduated from high school in 85. You need people. to cut that. <laughs> okay, Chester. Well, let me, okay, I'm yes, Chester you telling us, we're going to plate this up real quick, and then we can talk about that more. I'm sorry, guys, at home. Chester is just saying hello. This is, this is such a okay. treat. So we're putting the risotto in the center of the bowl. If one of you guys wants to go harass him, that'd be good. <laughs> um, we're putting the risotto in the center of the bowl. And that risotto has that beautiful flavor from the cheese in here. Um, and then I'm just going to put these greens all around. We're going to surround this dish in these beautiful mustard. And mustard greens have a little spiciness to them. Um, and we really want that for balance in this dish. And then we have these prunes. We've poached these um, dried plums or prunes uh, in some, some nice red wine. Not this red wine, once again. <laughs> We're going to put these that around. That would be a sin. Yeah. It would be, sad, yeah, it would be a summer. sin to take a 1985 wine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so enough of those because it's important for the balance of this dish. And then, oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry. Literally, the dogs are getting restless. Literally. Okay. Must be um, and then mm -hmm. the cheek right on top. Oh, this oh, is, wow. you guys are in for a treat. And then I'd like you to spoon some of that sauce on there because that sauce is really important. Um, Just melts. Yes, 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 yes. And then we have a tiny bit more of this plum puree. I'm just going to put a dollop on there. Okay, so Gorgeous. that is our veal cheek dish. And I think this cheese with all that kind of funk on it and the veal cheek is going to be stunning with this, but let's see what everybody has to say. Wow. And then, can't wait. yeah, oh, because this is a special is. wine. Um, Again, I know people who've done our dinners before, we choose wines that are very special that you can't just go anywhere and get. You can't just go to Molly's or you know Argonaut, which are awesome stores, I love them. But you can't but just go anywhere and get these wines. This isn't 
you know, this isn't your average wine dinner um, where these things are all pretty special. So, okay, mm -hmm. jump in. Dig in. Right. Jump in. So, you guys will probably need more of that. A little more about the wine. This is from the Dow. So, I spoke about that zone that's cool climate. It's where Alvaro Castro makes the Quinta de Saish. And um, it's also where the fruit for this comes from. So, I mentioned that Porto dos Cavaleiros, Cab San Joao. Um, Porto Lobo, these are three brands from the same winery called Cab San Joao. Porto dos Cavaleiros means the Knight's Gate, and so you have this I medieval know. gate. And I thought it was the like a cowboy, but the Knight's oh. Gate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cavalero, caballero, it sounds like yeah, a cowboy, but yeah. it's a it's a oh. gentleman that rides a horse. <laughs> yes. Oh. Which in ancient a world gentleman would have, would have been a, a knight. Not a horse. savage. <laughs> so it's a blend, mm -hmm. it's a red blend, of course, but because we're working with Fruit from the Dow, it's it's great. They are grapes that grow in this more moderate climate environment. So Jayen is the wine that you'll see listed first on our little cheat sheet on the back. That's the Portuguese term for mencia. And mm. it acts a little bit like Pinot Noir, although it's not the same thing as Pinot Noir. There's a whole bunch of other grapes here too. We have a lot of information on our website if you'd like to look up more details, but I won't take our time right now to talk about them. Only to say that that type of grape is not typically known to age for this long. So it's another sort of happy accident. It doesn't, this wine does not see oak. It's another cement aged wine. Which is so crazy. Yeah. This cement aged wine. That's mm -hmm. just amazing. But think about the power and the intensity of the fruit. This does have a little bit of aga, so technically mm -hmm. the rules weren't as clear then, but back in 1985 they were allowed to use a little fruit from Bailaba yeah. mm -hmm. and a little fruit from the Dow and blend across regions, and that's not something that goes yeah. these days if you want to label it varietally and, or label it regionally, but it worked very, very well. So with both of these two reds, mm -hmm. it's fascinating to me how bright they still are mm -hmm. and how much Incredible. tension they still have. A lot of times an, old, an aged wine, you can kind of taste that it's close to mm -hmm. falling apart, right? And that's what we mean by when you decant it, it might peak and then deteriorate. Right. Mm -hmm. As you're drinking it, the flavors sort of dissolve. It's just not quite as vivid and, and precise. And this one I think very much is. Not only that, but I've had this wine people, right? We go from account to account back in mm -hmm. the before times. And I would have tasted this wine with you and then shown it to somebody down the road mm -hmm. and then maybe zip up to Boulder to show someone. And this bottle, I've seen it last days. Really? Yes. Wow. Drinking down yeah. a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Really? And it's still fine. It's not going to last days here. No. <laughs> I was going to say, not in this um, house. It's, it's, a really difficult <laughs> it's a difficult accomplishment on my part. There's not five to just finish it off. Yeah. <laughs> the wine's already practically gone. But they do, they stand up over years and then even once you open them. A lot of wine will deteriorate in the mm. first day. Yeah. Oxidize too much and this one just doesn't. So it is such a incredible. pleasure. And now, now, speaking of treasures. Yeah, and so mm. what I liked and I, I had hoped for this is I really liked how the prune yeah. brought back the fruitiness in this. Mm. How Absolutely. That, that dried plum really kind of brought that back and that funky Another. cheese. So I think this came out great. Perfect. This is amazing. I think it came out great. Yeah, high ten, high five. I, totally, <laughs> I highly recommend a spoon. Mm -hmm. Yes, dish because yeah. it's a shame to leave all of that dill, jus, and like all that deliciousness. It is so good, really, really good. And I love the greens. I would have never yeah. really thought of that. The greens around it really are, do. They freshen it up, so you can really fully enjoy that whole dish. You know, we don't think a lot of times about our palate and it, with wine, mm. the same thing. We keep it balanced and we just mm -hmm. exhaust our palate mm -hmm. if it's all rich yeah. mm -hmm. or something. And we need, things to, we need things right. to cleanse our palate and balance it. And, and the prune has a really nice tangy note to it too. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, that kind of, um, a little bit of a bitey, not quite sour, but tangy mm -hmm. that offsets the richness and the Wow, you were right about that cheese. Okay, yeah, that cheese was fun, oh, huh? Yeah, man. yeah. So we had to special order that shipped in from Portugal. You know, Ooh, hello, somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Well, awesome. Okay, and then on to you know, as you guys are enjoying, please do. We're gonna um, talk about a little bit the last course, which mm -hmm. I think is super fun. So of course we're gonna do a port as in a fortified wine. We, we're not gonna do Portugal without doing a port. So. Desserts seem like an obvious place, even though there's more aspects than just dessert. So I, I just wanted to mention that. And so we have a couple components. We're basically doing like petit fours, you know, a little tasting mm -hmm. of different things. 
And we have oh, a little... I saw your picture about this on social. Yeah, oh, we have a little so savory and sweet in some of these things. So mm -hmm. we have uh, in your little box of treats, you have some port wine jelly, um, which, you know, literally is just, again, not the, this port, but it's a port wine jelly. Um, so that is, thank you, Matthew. I'll put this right here. And then we have another, you know, a couple fun components. We have a chocolate shortbread that we've covered in chocolate and gold dust, because who doesn't like oh, gold dust? Mustard mm -hmm. dust. Yeah, some chocolate in the fridge and we'll thing. And then we have um, a sweet gorgonzola cheesecake. So Ooh. more of a sweet version of a whipped gorgonzola cheesecake. And you and made then, these all in house, of oh, course. Of course. Of course. How love dare that. you? How dare you? I'm simply paying you a compliment. Like, <laughs> wow, you have such an accomplished array. <laughs> I love dessert like this. Wow. Yeah. How fun, right? Mm. To the savory, yeah. sweet. We can never fun. decide what to get, so I this know. is perfect. I know perfect. that's that's how you know Beth and I. You know when we go out to dinner, sometimes you know as friends. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna be. <laughs> we'll do like both. We'll get a cheese course and dessert, yes, so, so we can good. share oh, each other's because yes. we both love them. That salty. Yeah, I really want both. <laughs> and then <laughs> we have honest. little chocolate shavings. We're gonna put right on top of this double chocolate <laughs> fudge torte. And I know that's kind of. I made a mess, and I like being neat and clean. Darn it. <laughs> I'm, we won't I'm hold it again. Party fouling myself here. But anyway, so it's just a little petty four plate. But we're gonna have port wine with this, and there's port jelly, chocolate shortbread, sweet cheesecake, a savory gorgonzola cheesecake, a double chocolate fudge tort, and another jelly. So oh, wow. it's a plate of petty fours. Just so that way every little bite, and by the way, this would be great with the last wine too. So don't yes. So getting rid, I'm not getting rid of my last glass. I know, I'm not getting rid of it. You should travel back and forth, I think, between, <laughs> but, between your yeah, glasses. You definitely want to taste those together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is our final course in our little port, Portugal journey. Mm -hmm. um, and let me know what you think. And let's talk about the actual fortified wine because that's cool. This is what they're known so for. So we're on a Portugal journey and we're finishing with port, at least for tonight's dinner. Yes. Now this one, this one very much fits with you know, these tried and true traditions that Portugal is so well known for. And it's a beautiful new, well, old becomes new story. So you can see on the label, if you're lucky enough to picked up a bottle of this, Noble and Marat late vintage bottle, late bottle vintage, I should say, port. This says rooted 1831 and founded 2016. So that oh, wow. means... Huh, yeah, what does that mean? Well, I mentioned before about the establishment of the DO of okay. Porto and some regulations that were perhaps a little bit exclusive or prohibitive. Yeah. It, prohibitive. Mm -hmm. So one of the regulations included um, a clause that stated in order to produce your own port, you had to have a very large number of liters in storage, <laughs> in your reserves. Oh, why? Mm. Well, yeah. because small farmers can't afford that. So you have Dows yeah. and Taylor Fladgate yep. and okay. n beautiful producers, don't get me wrong. They didn't make the rules, but they may have perhaps influenced it over the years. Yeah. And so oh, in you. recent years, there has been an evolution of the policy, which has changed to reduce that minimum amount required in reserves to make your own port under your own name and call it Porto. And Noble and Marat had been saving up and saving up and saving up. And as the limit came down, their reserves crossed the threshold. And so, awesome. after, uh, being, it, yeah. after being growers mm -hmm. and producing mosto, which then goes on those beautiful yep. boats down the beautiful river mm -hmm. to a porto to be aged and bottled in Quinta Nova de Gaia by the big names, they've been doing that since 1831. So they've been selling the must. They've been for, doing all the for all, all the time, work. and they haven't been able to make for it. Not under their own name. I know. I don't like that. Not I'm glad now they can. <laughs> yes. And so the rule changed, and it's this father and son team. Many more people involved, of course. Terrifying place to arrive to. Oh. The taxi drivers were petrified. <laughs> <laughs> you barely fit a very small European car down this row. And please have a look. We're going to include some photos of the Douro, but it is one of the most extreme and dramatic wine regions in the world. These terraces were literally carved out by Roman slaves. Oh, God. Wow. And they've managed to sort of cling to the hilltop. They're taking away a lot of erosion, right, because of all these mm -hmm. roots. But the whole mm. river valley is planted from pretty much the border of Spain really? until Porto on the coast. 
and you have extreme heat and you have incredible diversity of soils. We might talk about that with one of our next producers in the next dinner. And so you have a blend of grapes, which is allowed, of course, because it's Portugal. It's a blended culture. Um, and then what you do in order to make port is you bring the grapes in and instantly you begin trotting, foot trotting is the traditional method. So we would have a team of maybe 15 people standing in a granite Wait, I love lagar. Lucy, that? Yes. Ah, <laughs> I'm just checking. So, yes. <laughs> and so the granite lagar might be about the size of, of inside of your um, island. Inside and we can of, dance? Yeah, we, it's, it's this <laughs> side. And so we hold hands and we'd stomp and stomp and stomp and it's 24 hour shifts. Oh my oh, God. Wow. For days and days and days. I'll give you a photo. And in the end, it has this vivid, um, purple, pink. You have to do all of the extraction as fast as you can because that's where all of the color and the tannin comes wow. from. But you can't let it start to ferment or you'll lose sugar. Yes, exactly. Oh, so that's you, so crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have to beat it up yeah. and pull out as much tannin and color as you possibly can and then fortify it and then you age your mosto. That's what they did and then sold the mosto and now they can finally make their own port. They but use a really interesting yeah. technique called a lasagna. So they throw Not the like skins. Not lasagna from Italy though. Okay. But imagine layers. <laughs> okay. I'm just checking. It tastes yeah, a little I'm different. Okay. Like that. Imagine the layers. So inside of the lagar, we've got a, a layer of grapes and then maybe they throw in some stems and um, skins and then another fresh layer of grapes and then throw in some old stems ah. and skins. Because the grape stem, just table grapes, you can see the grape stem is all spiky. Mm -hmm. And that acts like puncture wounds. So you stomp in a lasagna and it oh, punctures and extracts. Right, right, right. It helps. It really, it really ah. accentuates and helps it. Yeah. And so often yeah. in wine, I talk to you about like gentle extraction of tannins. Yes, and they don't this wanna... they beat the crap out of it. That's what they're crap out of it. But you know what I do, back. what I love about this port is to me, if you don't know a lot about port, sometimes you get some less great quality port and it's just sweet. This isn't yeah. just sweet, no. this is very diverse so and how beautiful. How much tannin? I mean, there's yeah. a lot of tannin yeah. here. It's, it's, and it's because of have this you process. Have you gentlemen tried this? It's almost reminded of like laying the grapes out and drying mm -hmm. them. And, you know what I mean? Like, okay, Jen, try, try some of these little guys because because each nice. little bite is okay. different. Each little bite is different with this, and that's what I think is fun. Oh gosh, where do I even want to? Oh, I'm going to start love, closest love to me. Chili. And I just love how each component of the petit four of the dessert is going to make. I mean, this your experience to be different, not to make the wine taste different. Wh whatever you know, what they, I'm trying to say. They combine differently, though. They yeah. react to each other. They react mm -hmm. in your mouth differently, so you get like a different experience. So mm -hmm. I love like that little journey of wine tasting and you're making your way along this mm -hmm. and you're trying it along the way and it's like, oh, well that's this, now it's that. So that's what I thought would be fun about this experience. That is delicious. Well, and there's the savory oh, one smokes. Wait till you try to <laughs> I'm going savory mm. next. That's so savory. yes, so it is Ooh. true that so it's especially, you know, more widely available, we could say, mm -hmm. ports because this they're making a few hundred exactly pieces. this is special port in mm. case this is not known here people yeah. I know this is good have to make its way it's just so pretty and so I know. beautiful Jesus. are both of these the same as you least? yes okay. but but then then so try it'd be totally show. different try the savory cheesecake okay. and then while problem. these ladies are enjoying um i want to say i hope you guys had a great dinner tonight mm. and i hope you absolutely join us for our next wine dinner uh where we'll be going through the the more new version of Portugal. And then beyond that, we're gonna be stretching out from just wine. I know uh, Matthew, who's on the other side, we love sake. Mm. We're gonna be doing a sake dinner. Yeah, super Maybe fun. a rosé dinner and some actually Italian whites. A lot of people don't know a lot about Italian white wine. All whites? All whites, Ooh. Italian whites. Um, Beth and I that love Italian summer wine. Too. And yeah, so that's summertime. April, yeah. May, June. Yeah. yeah, so we have some fun new wine things coming on and um, we hope you join us and we hope you've had a great dinner. Thank you, Chef Gabe and Jen and Beth and Matthew and everybody. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jen. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers, Jen. everybody. Cheers. Cheers.